and welcome to another Sunday morning edition of the What is Truth radio show. Dr. Michael Caesar here with our panel. Looking forward to spend the next hour with you in a great, great book in the Bible, in the New Testament. And it's the book of the Romans, written by the Apostle Paul. And he opens that book uh, with the good news, uh, uh, something that excited him. Uh, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. And uh, may this Sunday morning be the morning when you would uh, believe that gospel of Christ and get God's power of salvation. Paul, uh, taking the time carefully like a lawyer to go through and explain to us in chapters uh, 2 and uh, 3 that we all have the need of that great gospel, that there's no difference between a Jew or a Gentile. We have all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. But God is offering his righteousness through our faith in Jesus Christ, that we can be justified freely by God's grace through the redemption and the payment that Jesus Christ made at Calvary's cross. And then what he does in the fourth chapter is he wants to show us that faith has always been the vessel, the vehicle by which one comes to God. And in the fourth chapter, in verse 15, he says, The law, the Ten Commandments, worketh wrath. It really gets uh, people upset. Uh, therefore, verse 16, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all. It's not of the law. It's going to be again grace and faith. And this is the good news we're getting. And uh, we got our panel here. John Giuseppe is with me. Kevin Deegan is with me. We're going to spend a little time working through the fourth chapter, getting into the fifth chapter where we understand that we've been justified by faith and we can have peace with God, not through the law, not through the church, not through sacraments, but through our Lord Jesus Christ. Gentlemen, what are your Amen. thoughts as you hear these great verses in Romans? Amen. Amen. Well, it's, he's set, Paul's setting up right now to explain faith. I mean, it's, I try to think of the listener out there at all times and, and um, even people that are not, quote, religious, if you will, they think that you have to do things to get to heaven. You have to earn your way into heaven. And we talked about this week after week. I know I haven't been here for the last couple of weeks, but, um, but Paul is showing over here, the work's been done. Amen. And, and you just have to believe it. Now, um, and the work was done by whom, as Paul Train tell us? God, by Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ, amen. Who, who is God. And of course, only God could pull this off could do this kind of work that only god so and and now he's talking about its belief now you have to work on your belief yeah i understand that you know if this is the first time listener that you're hearing this you're like oh, it's kind of kind of odd to me how, how do i believe it's so simple it's in one book a uh, king james holy bible you yeah. just it you just get there and if you want to pare it down there's 66 books in this book if you want to pare it down, go to John, go to Romans, go to Romans, go to John, go back and forth, back yeah. and forth, and you will get a depth and a, and a, a, a love, a love and a reverence for the, these words in the word of God, and you'll get an understanding. Uh, it's, it's, it's different than our world. Our world, you have to earn everything. What's in your bank account? What'd you get on your test? What's your batting average? How, you know, how many girlfriends do you have? I mean, we're always, in, in our, especially in America, we're always in our society. Competitive. It's competitive. Yes. Yeah. And how much do you have where God is just saying, look, you don't have to do all this. I just want to know yeah. that you know me. I have a gift. Uh, uh, he calls it a free gift, Kevin, right? Uh, yes. He speaks of it as, as the uh, free gift in the fifth chapter. And uh, you were talking about faith, John. And, you know, you'll meet a lot of people. They, they say, I have faith. But Paul, later on in the same book of Romans in the 10th chapter, will say faith, true faith, the kind that pleases God comes by hearing. And the hearing you need to do is by the word of God. You need to spend some time in the book to build the right kind of faith, or you might have a misplaced faith. You might. You might. And if you don't, if it's some people, you know, we hear it all. We hear it all. We hear it, listener out there. Some, some of you might not be readers. I'm just not a reader. I grew up in a TV age. I watch things. There are some, especially in our area, some really good Bible-believing churches yep. that are preached by some really good Bible-believing men. You can watch them on men. YouTube. You can watch them on YouTube. Yeah. And, and again, as long, so it doesn't matter. It's the words, as long as the words of God, whether you're reading them from off the page 
or they're coming from uh, through, the, through the mouth of another human being. But they got to be the words of God. Yeah. So you have to be careful and make sure that you're in a church that has that has a leader that knows the word of God and and, and teaches. Because the faith comes by hearing the word of God. Uh, Kevin, I know that's something you not only believe, you practice uh, out there uh, trying to give people the word of God. Right. The, the uh, <clears throat> We're told that... Uh, that uh, how shall they hear except they preach, right? Right, right. So, um, you know, folks, if you don't read the Bible, if you don't hear, like you were talking about preachers preaching, um, you know, how are you going to know what the Scripture says? Uh, And there's a lot of people out there telling you, well, you should do this, you should do that. But what really matters is what's in the Word of God. That's right. right. And the premise of the show is what is truth. The premise of the show, week after week, um, that's why we're reading your Bible because we're trying to show you that we, we didn't write this. These, these are not our words. These are, these are the words of, of our God, of your God. And we're trying to go through it so you have an understanding and an appreciation for these words that you too could come to, to, to the throne of Jesus Christ. Look, we don't, we don't get paid for this. You know, it's, 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 it's interesting. You know, why do you have to preach to me? Is what, what you hear all the time. So I'm not preaching, but t- teaching you. But this is the most important thing in your life, whether you know it or not. Yeah. And, and you know, and you were talking again about uh, having the right words and hearing the right words and, and having the truth. Uh, Jesus prayed to his father, a father, uh, sanctify these people, set them apart by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Uh, there was an angel that came down and spoke to Daniel in the Old Testament and uh, when Daniel was asking him a question, uh, the angel answered him in Daniel chapter ten twenty one. He says, look, I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. I, 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 I want to show you the truth. You don't need to hear what I got to say. You got to know what God's written in his Bible. And this is one big lie, this world. Oh, it, yeah, it, in the it, world. It's is yeah. one big lie. And folks, I'll tell you, we, we, we have never seen it more so than we do today. It's going to be worse tomorrow, but guess what? It's, it was happening back in Jesus' day, before Jesus' day. I can't tell you how many times, Mike, and it says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Jesus would say Nevertheless, that, yep. I tell you the yep. truth. And here he is today, that ye must be born again. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. This is coming from God. And he's not changing. He's, he's not he's changing. The he same thing, changed. same message. That's it. You know, and, and he says, you, you focus on the things that are not seen as opposed to the things that are seen. Yeah. And that's our problem, and that's our lust, and that's our covetedness. People say, all oh, the Ten Commandments. God doesn't want you to covet. God doesn't want you to have nice things. No, it's, you, 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 you're listening to the wrong teaching. You don't want to make that the center of your life. Things that you covet pass. They rust. They rot. They go away. God is offering you something that you will have not only in this lifetime, but forevermore. Yeah, uh, on the other side. And, and, and what Paul is writing here in the fourth chapter of Romans is, uh, therefore, it's a faith that it might be by grace to, to the end that the promise that God made may be sure to all people. Uh, and when Abraham heard this, verse 20, really, you're going to bless all people. Uh, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, like, thank you, Lord, that you made this promise. If you spoke it, I can believe it, and I'm going to be strong in believing what you've said, and I'm not going to stagger at your promises through unbelief. I'm not going to be skeptical of what you've said, God. There are a lot of things I'm skeptical of. By the way, it's good, John, you were a salesman, mm-hmm. and you probably learned or maybe taught your wife, honey, look, you know, I'm a salesman. I'm out there. Some other salesman might come and try and sell us something you got to be a little skeptical. Let's check something out before we write the check. Sure. Right? Sure. But when it comes to God, and he says, this is my promise, you can write the check of faith, and you'll never go wrong. That's that's true. Um, who else can you trust in other than God? I mean, when God says it, yeah, you can believe it. Um, and that promise is available to everybody. Yeah. It wasn't just to Abraham. It was wasn't all. just to his seed. I'll we bless all looked nations. at that last last week. So it's wide open. Yeah. God has given you a promise, and all you need to do is accept it, believe it, and trust him. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I was just looking up some verses Go on ahead, promise. Brother. I I love 
the promise because it comes from God. Yes. It's a promise from God. You know, you might buy a life insurance policy. You have a promise. We, our bills used to be called promissory notes. And right? by the way, sometimes an insurance company actually goes out of business. And despite the fact you faithfully paid all those years, <laughs> right? they can't perform. But, but here in the 21st verse of the fourth chapter, Abraham was fully persuaded that whatever he promised, he was also able to perform. You're talking God's putting his name behind it. I'm saying, think about that. Yeah. Who is standing behind the promise? Amen. It's Amen. God. It's not an insurance company. <laughs> it's not a salesman. Amen, brother. It's not the some creator. religious yeah, exactly. leader. <laughs> it's God himself made this promise. And the promise in Galatians 3.14 is a promise of his spirit by faith. Uh, in Ephesians 3.6, the promise in Christ by the gospel. Second Timothy 1.1, 1, 1, the promise of life is in Christ. Yeah. Titus 1.2, the promise is that God cannot lie. God will not Amen. lie. God Amen. made this promise. And guess what that promise is? Eternal life. Who in their right mind would turn down a promise of eternal life forever and ever and ever, promised and backed up by the authority of God himself? He, Hebrews 6.13, again, reiterates this, that it, this promise he swore by himself. God himself swore. I, you know, when we go to court, raise your right hand, put your hand on the Bible. I swear to tell the truth, yep. the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. <laughs> this is God himself yeah, giving amen. his promise, and there's no greater authority in the in the universe. Oh, and in 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 addition, Hebrews six seventeen says that this promise is immutable can't be changed. Can't change. right. It's a promise of God. You, go. you can't lose it. You can't, uh, you know, it, it's not going to go away. It's not going to change. It's a promise of eternal life. First John two twenty five. God promised eternal life. What's stopping you from taking advantage yeah. of that well, promise? Here, here, herein lies, lies the key to life. Now what we're, we're showing, listen, we're showing you that God says, all you have to do is believe that my son took the sin for you. He says, and thou shalt be saved. It's that easy. What that also means is Jesus tells us all sin can be forgiven except blasphemy. And if you don't believe, you're basically calling God a liar. You're blaspheming him. You're blaspheming what you're him. Saying. And I go all the time. Mike to John 16, 9. And Jesus says, he says, when I leave, the, I will send you to comfort and he will reprove the world of sin. If you go down to the next verse, he says, why? Because they believe not on me. It doesn't say, it doesn't say because you were stealing. It doesn't say because you're an adulterer. It doesn't say any of those things. You will die in those sins because you won't have a cover for those sins. Yeah. But herein lies it. Again, listen to that. It's the belief. You simply believe and accept. Have you ever, have you ever in your life, I think every human being in some way or another, tried to convince somebody that they were going to do something or they can do something and the person didn't believe them? Whether it's you have a breakup and you say, look, I know I could be better. I'm going to make this work. And they don't want to believe you. Have you ever had that? Right, you? right. It's terrible. Right. It's, it's, it's a terrible feeling yeah. to be so sincere and have the other party not believe. Now, put yourself in God's shoes. Yeah, and, the, and the, maybe the, the difference would be this. And that, that's happened. You're right. In a lot of relationships, there have been a mistake on one person side against the other. And then the person who made the mistake is repentant and sorry and wants a second chance. But the person that was offended is like, I don't know if I can trust you. You did that once. You already made an error, but you've got God making a promise. He's never made an error. He's, he's never did anything wrong. And, and, and here, uh, Abraham being fully persuaded in verse 21, that what God promised, God's also able to perform. Therefore it, the righteousness was, imp it was imputed to him. And at verse 23, and now this is not written just for Abraham's sake alone, that it was imputed to him, but it's for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. And, and I want to mention that, John, because you were just saying earlier, you know, God's promising you eternal life. And you're going, how do I know you can even give eternal life? And he says, well, my son was resurrected. My son died and he was resurrected. And, and here's my point. If you'll trust in my son, he's the first fruits. 
you will die in your body, but I'm going to resurrect you to eternal life with the same power that he used to resurrect my son. I've already given you the stamp of receipt of proof of purchase. I did it with my son. If I can do it with him, I've got the power to do it with anyone else. And, and this is why if we believe, verse 24, on God that raised up Jesus Christ, our Lord from the dead, verse 25, he was delivered for our offenses. He went to pay for all of our sins and he was raised again for our justification to show us we can trust God just at his word. He said he can do it. He's got the ability to perform it. What would hold us back, John? What? Well, I think what holds people, I, t I tell you, Mike, this, I think, and Kevin, every, every saved Christian will tell you it's, that's frustrating. I think what you have is what's really frustrating when people believe that there is a God, yes, but they don't want to believe these words. That just blows me away. Yeah, that, that is surprising. That just blows me away. But we have a society right now that questioning if there, if, if there even is a God. Right. And I get it. Listen, I get it. You're questioning, you know, you might have come from a family over a generation over a generation that, did, you know, God wasn't in the house, wasn't talked about. You don't know much about it. Doesn't mean there isn't one. But it's those that, that walk around this earth, they know there's a God, and you talk to them and say, well, I'm a good person. I think he'd be okay with me. Well, my church says this, and if I do this, and if I do that, that's what frustrates me. It says, look, so you believe there's a God. Oh, I definitely believe there's a God. Here's his words. What is it you don't understand? I think that's that's a tougher to me. I think you're going to butt burn in the lower parts of hell when when you meet him. And, and he says, you believe it was me, but you never had you never gave a hoot about my word and specifically what I wanted from you. What's, As opposed to the person that says, I'm not sure there even is a God. What, yeah. What's even worse is God sent his only begotten son to suffer and die to shed his holy blood for you. And then you reject that. You trust in something else. Hebrews 10 talks about a sore punishment. There's different levels of hell. That's right. And God talks about, uh, well, I'll read the verse. How much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. God is offering this free gift. You, you basically slapped it right out of his hand. He's got his hand out with this free gift. All you got to do is take it, and you just slapped it right out. What do you think is going to be the end of that? God shed his blood so that yeah. you could have eternal life. He paid for your sins, he's, all of them. And he suffered. He suffered physically, emotionally, he was humiliated. And he, he, see what the scripture says. He, he, for your sins... For our sins, what that means is if you don't accept this gift, you're going to suffer these things. Now, you were saying earlier, John, and, and you said, I, I have a bit of an understanding because we live in a society where maybe a couple generations, no one's really gone to church. Um, even worse than that, a couple of generations, no one's ever had a Bible in the house, or if there was a Bible in the house, it was just uh, on a shelf somewhere, never, never looked at. And, uh, and people have notions, I'm a pretty good person, and, an, and another notion that gives them, th that I hear commonly is, well, you know, God is love. Well. You know, God is love. Now, now I, I was thinking about that, and I, I've got uh, the Bible open toward the back to the John. Apostle John, and he's, he wrote the first uh, general epistle of mm -hmm. John, just a short little book, five chapters. Mm -hmm. And in the fourth chapter, it says in verse 8, God is love. And in the uh, fourth chapter, verse 16, we know and believe uh, the love of God uh, the, to us because God is love. And so he says it twice. And here's my, if you don't want to reason to someone, I said, well, look, you do think God is love. Of course, the person will say, yeah, I believe God is love. And I'll say, well, where do you think you came up with that notion that God is love? How, well, how do you think that got spread around that God is love? Somebody, somebody took those two little phrases out of the Bible. So, so there's good news there. God is love. But don't you want to look a little bit more into that book and learn about that God who is love and exactly how did he love us? He loved by how, John, John how, 3, 16. How did, there you go. By John 3, 16. Yeah. You know, he loved the world. You know, he gave us, he gave his only begotten son that there. ever believeth in him shall not 
perish, perish, but will have everlasting life. That's his love. Again, Mike, and I think it's a great point. People are walking around, well, God, I know God loves me. I, he, he does, but he loves you by what he did for you. Right. The, the, and he the, wants you to receive and that he wants gift. you to receive it. He's not looking, if he doesn't know you, I mean, we can show you all in the Bible. If he doesn't know, he doesn't even hear your prayers. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so I think of it like this. I, I think of it like a, maybe like a matrimonial proposal. Uh, there's a guy at work and, and he loves this girl and he really does. And he wants to demonstrate his love for this girl. And however he may demonstrate it, he may go out and save up for an engagement ring. He may uh, save up to get a house for her, do all those things. But when he finally goes and makes a proposal, she either has to receive it or ignore it right. or reject it. And and this is God saying, I've, I've done my part of exercising the love. I'd like you now to receive it. Right, right. And the way I learned to receive it is, again, looking into the book where he tells you, this is what I've done. And I know you say you're basically good, but what I've said is, is here that, look, you, you've sinned and you've come short of my glory and I want to justify you, even though at this point you're ungodly, kind of almost like there was that movie years ago, I'm trying to think of it, Pretty Lady, Pretty Woman. Pretty Woman. And there was a wealthy, wealthy guy and a girl from the other side of the tracks and, and he wanted to win her over, but she had to receive what he offered her and he wanted to offer all that wealth to her. And finally, by the end, she received it. Well, God's got all this wealth he wants to offer, eternal life, justification, redemption, the gift. But we've got to look into it and right. receive it. I, I was explaining to um, a child one time. They love puppies. Particularly child. Yeah, they do. Love puppies, right? So look at it this way. I said, you love puppies. I do, right? So any puppy that, that comes into the house or comes into your yard, you love. Oh, I just love when puppies come. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you know, there's puppies out there that don't, don't know how to get to your front yard. Uh, you only love what comes through your gate. Right. It's the same thing with God. He loves all puppies. Yeah. You like, you love all puppies and you will love every puppy that shows up on your front lawn. You can't have enough puppies. So he's but, willing to open the door of right. heaven to anyone that will come to by the door. But there's only one door. There's only one door. Jesus. And if, if, if you come to that door, he'll open it for you. And if you don't, he doesn't know you. Yeah. He doesn't know you exist. That's good. The little kid got it. I don't can't understand why people can't get it. So, so look in here in this fourth chapter and seeing this good news. When, when Abraham heard this promise in, in chapter 4, verse 20, he was strong. He exercised his faith and gave glory to God, and because of that, he believed God could perform what he promised, and God said, since you trust me at my word, I'm going to impute, I'm going to give you my righteousness. But verse 23, it wasn't just for Abraham, it, it can be imputed to any of us, verse 24, if we will believe on God the Father that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, he was, again, he was delivered for our offenses at Calvary's cross. Three days later, he was raised from the tomb for our justification, and he rolls into the fifth chapter. Therefore, we can be justified by faith and have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a, uh, he, he keeps going. Go ahead, Kevin. Well, look at that example you guys were using, a guy that, he wants to, he, he's got his eyes on some woman okay. and I want to get married. Okay. And imagine that the woman never, you know, he wrote a letter, sent the letter, the letter got That's lost. Good. She never read the letter. How would she know? God wrote a love letter there here. You, you guys were talking Excellent. about love. This Bible is God's love letter to yeah. you. And if you never read it, whose fault is that? Is that God's fault or yeah. your fault? God wrote it. Because you need to know in black and white what God promised. If you don't know what he promised, if you didn't know that he wanted to chase after you, that he was interested in you, that he loved you, that he died for you, how work, could you yeah. ever be right. saved? Right. So, uh, and, and again, 1 John uh, 5 verse 9 says, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater for this is the witness of God, which he had testified of his son. This book right here, this is the witness of God. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Yeah. 
You make God a liar because this is what God said. Right. I love you. I care about you. I want to give you a eternal life because uh, you've made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record that God hath given us eternal life. And this life is in his son, not in your church, not in good works, not in being a good person, not in the Ten Commandments, not in being baptized, not in swinging some smoke, reforming your life. Those things don't save. It's Jesus Christ and his blood that washes away sin. He that has the son hath life. He that hath not the son hath not life. Now, when you begin, I think you begin in verse 9. Yes. And you, you were saying about the witness of men versus, versus the, the witness, witness of, of God. God. Now, I've got a book here. This is an official publication of the uh, Lutheran Church uh, pr prepared by the Commission on Worship by the Lutheran Church, the Missouri Synod, with their official stamp of approval in their publishing house in St. Louis. And I, I had one with the Catholic Church. And, and here's what they're saying. Here's the witness of men. Um the holy apostles say baptism saves you. Okay, now I don't find that in the Bible. So here's some men saying another group of men say this, and the Bible just said the witness of God is greater. This is the witness God gave, not of baptism, but of his son. Not of church membership, but of his son. Not of confirmation, but of his son. And so what we're seeing here is the faith that saves is that faith that obviously is coming from the word of God, the witness of God. That's why we have this program called What is Truth? Uh, Pilate asked Jesus, what is, what is truth? truth? And before <laughs> Jesus could answer, he walked out of the room. And you, you, know, you may be asking yourself, what is truth? Well, don't leave the room. Stick around for the second half of the show because what we want to do here is we want to take the words that Jesus gave to his prophets, and we're reading the book of uh, Romans, Paul the Apostle, who met Jesus on the road to Damascus, who Jesus told him, these are the words I want you to write. And he's writing in here, and he's explaining the good news. And uh, we're with you every Sunday morning right here on the Big WEC, uh, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. You can listen to the archive shows. You can go to our website. We're sponsored by Grace and Truth Church. So if you go Grace and Truth Church, one long word, dot org, you can go there, hit the sermons tab, hit the YouTube tab. You can watch the programs. We film them. You can uh, listen to some things. The point of Grace and Truth Church is to tell you the truth about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll be right back with you in a moment after this break. Amen. And uh, thanks for sticking around here. Got another half hour on the program. What is truth? Dr. Michael Caesar here in studio with John Giuseppe. Kevin Deegan, we're looking at a great, great, great book in the New Testament, the book of Romans. And Paul, uh, I think he probably considers it maybe one of his most important writings because it's explaining the gospel of Christ, the power of uh, salvation that comes by faith. And he been working as our way through the uh, first four chapters, explaining that we all have a need for it. And, and God's willing to provide the need for everyone. And then he gives an example of a man in the Old Testament that had faith and trusted in God, Abraham. And I think by the fifth chapter, he's kind of assuming if somebody's stuck with him this long, they're probably on board. They've probably gotten aboard the salvation train. And now he wants to talk about the blessings that come when somebody receives the gift of salvation and justification. Mike, yeah. before, you, before you do, I, yeah. when, when, you ended the, when you ended the first half of the show, reading the first verse of chapter 5, I always like to, to point out, um, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through yeah. our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, when you think on this, if, if Paul is telling us, if we're justified, we have peace with God, if we're not justified by faith through our Lord Jesus Christ, we do not have peace with God. You, that, you this, know, that's great, John. And it, this, uh, this whole thing about um, that God is love, God is love, don't fall for that. I mean, God is love, but the way we explained it in the first half of the show, in Proverbs 17, listen to what he says here. He says, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. So he turn it around. Why would God say that? If he says, I will love them that love me, he's basically saying, I don't love them that don't love me. Well, well, the, the, 
the truth is you begin to read the Bible, things that we, we never really think about. And, and, you know, when I first read it, my, my interest was, God, what, what do you have for me? And God showed me, I have salvation for you. Then I began to look, and, and all of a sudden, God pulls the veil back and says, there is war in my universe. I, I didn't start the war. A Lucifer and the fallen angels started the war. And it would have been just fine if they alone had fought against me and my angels. But instead, they started getting a bunch of confused people through different reasons and ways and religions and philosophies to join up with their army and, and fight against me. And sinners in their ignorance are on the wrong side of this battle. But Exodus 15, Moses said, you know, the, the Lord, he's a man of war. And when God condemns a sinner that's fighting against him, that's, that's like a declaration of war the sinners made against God, and they're on the wrong side. When God justifies a sinner, that's a declaration of peace. Therefore, being justified by faith, we now have peace with God. We're now on God's side. We never have to worry anymore about that's right. that. right. And, and that, you're right, John. That's right. And, and, and it's, I think it's, it's so important for the listener to know that. And, and if you don't know... Uh, that there is a God. And I'm not talking to you people that say, I believe there's a God. I just don't believe what he said, because that's basically what you're saying. I, we show you, you, you must be born again. You don't want to do it. You're saying, I don't believe it. That's even worse. You better watch yourself. But those people that come from families and whatnot, and you, you don't know that there is a God. And we're reading from your book. You say, well, that's just a book that was, you know, maybe it was published. Uh, you, the actual book was written 15 years ago, your book, or 10 years ago, right? No, this book, understand something. These words are for over 4,000 years. Oh, gosh, and, yeah. And, you know, so many Even civilizations beyond. that are in this book do not exist anymore. But Israel does. The Jews do. This book, when you start reading it, the right book, you'll understand that it's spiritual. You'll understand that God did visit the earth. And he did visit a people and make a people. And he did come down incarnate as a man called Jesus Christ. And he did pay for the sins that he told us, the soul that sinned shall surely die. And he did rise from the and dead. He rise from the dead, prove it. And, and the resurrection is a, a greatly attested uh, historical Amen. fact that's been looked at by many different people. And these words, you know, are more than 4,000 years old, uh, Psalm 11989, O oh Lord, forever thy word is settled in heaven. Amen. God is an eternal God with eternal words that want to speak to the heart and and give peace to the heart and eternal life to the heart. And the first thing that comes, therefore being justified by faith, we now have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. There is a peace that comes in your heart and your soul that I, 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 you won't know until you experience it. I didn't know it till I experienced it. I mean, for 39 years, I had never experienced it. I experienced the, the basic fears and phobias. The great fear I had was getting cancer or having a heart attack. I, I was afraid of death. As far as I thought, that was the end. And when I, when I was brought to this book and I learned about the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ, and I accepted that, in a moment of time, there was a peace like, I'm not afraid of death anymore. I now know that death is just that, like that puppy, I've come to the door, and, and when I get to the door of death, right away I'm going to be entered into the Father's house for all of eternity. There's a peace that it only comes when one believes and receives. Yeah. And before that, like you guys were talking about, um, if, if you, I was kind of uh, very early on, uh, with uh, two different groups, you have a disagreement, and one is the employer, and the other one is the um, uh, union. Okay, the union. Right? When the union and the employer have a disagreement, what do you have to have? A mediator. You have to have a mediator, a, a middleman yep. in the middle. And generally, he's not part of the either group. Right. Uh, and But he has to mediate between the differences. And God has sent a mediator because he's got a disagreement with you before you become his child, before you have that peace you were talking about. He's disagreeing with you because of your sin, and right. you're disagreeing with him. You may be, like John said, you're just not interested. I don't believe God. Well, God, God 
sees that as a disagreement. So he sent a mediator. That mediator is Jesus Christ, who will have, and uh, the scriptures say in 1 Timothy 2, verse 4, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Now, boom, before we we're saved the three of us here and and i know we got saved because at one point somehow we got to the bible and it was through hearing these words that we got the faith because faith comes by hearing and we put our faith in jesus christ but before that i was religious and i always thought the mediator was my priest right right well didn't you i mean uh, i i figured or, look they're or, the ones close to god church right or or the, the church priest. but you know yeah, I didn't even know what the heck I was doing. I was a fool. I, you know, it's, it's my, my my um my theory, folks. This is my theory. There's this, there's three people, three types of people. There's um people that hear the word of the Lord and come to it, okay, and embrace it and love it and are saved. There's people that we talked about that. Oh, I believe there's a God. I just, I just don't want to know what He has to say. All right, we talked about them. So you kind of keep it at arm's oh, length I, and never know, check I'm it good, out. I'm a good person. I'm yeah. a good person. I also don't know why God wouldn't want me. I don't me, need to check that right? out. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then there's the person we talked about that, you know what? Maybe they really don't know. They really doubt that there is a God. That's John's belief. There's, there's, three, pe- there's three types of people. There's one to come to the Lord. There's one that, that believe that there is a God, but they don't want to believe what he said. And there's some that really don't even know. Well, God in Proverbs calls you a, a, your wise you're a fool or you're just a simpleton. Yeah. The wise are the ones that come to the Lord. Right. All right. The fools were like me. I believe there was a God of some kind when I grew up. I mean, yeah, I, I believe. But I'm just too God. busy to look and into Jesus, it. Jesus, his son. I, yeah. think, I think he has a son named Jesus. I'm not really sure about this whole sacrifice thing and stuff like that. But I never came to the words. And then there's the simpleton. There's a simpleton that's out there and they live for today. And they live after their lusts and, you know, it, it, instant gratification. You know, John, that's good because there's a couple of verses. I think one's in Psalm 14, the other's in Psalm I don't know, 50 something, where it says the fool have said there is no God. God. Mm-hmm. But you know what I think today? It's the fool today says there's no word of God. There's no Bible. There's Heck, nothing no I need to look into. And that's a foolish thing. It, like you were so busy. I don't have time to look into this. And I, that was you, as you and I don't want yeah. to say it to you, brother too, but it, you, yeah. you came from that. We were fools. Yeah. We foolish. were fools because if, if whether we whether and we, we were, were, we were fooled, somebody we were, fooled us into exactly. believing you can't trust whether this book. Being, we yeah. were being led down a road yeah. uh, wrongly, but Jesus said, and this is kind of scary to me sometimes the love and Jesus says, let the, let, the, let the blind lead the blind. They both will fall into the, <laughs> the into ditch. The, the ditch. Uh, yep, and yep. I was like, come on, Jesus, really? <laughs> But that's what it is because he's making enough known over here for you to just to, to take a peek. Yeah. So there's only three types of people. You're wise, you're fool, or you're just darn simple. And, and to fool, show the goodness of God, now I'm thinking about it, even not just us sitting here at the table looking at the Bible, but the fact that God somehow worked it out that we can be on a radio station and this isn't a Christian radio station with just no. preaching all day long. This is a a good uh, station in this area that plays some of the finest music in the history of America and people listen to it. It's more a a fun station. And here God is saying, look, let's take some time to let these listeners hear because they may never turn on a Christian station. That's right. And let's reach out to them. I want to give them opportunity to consider these some wonderful people. That's the goodness of God. He opened the doors to some wonderful people to to have us be on this show. Bill and buddy and the work that they did. Yeah. Thank you guys. I, I agree with what you said, and the Bible uses examples like that. You know, the simple, I've seen people, and you, you could tell they're thinking, the mind's going and stuff. As we're preaching, you could you kind of see that guy over there, he's listening. Right. You know? Yeah. And, uh, but I think there's one other group, and that's the group, like the atheists we deal with. Oh, the scorners. The scorners. The scorners. Okay. That's, and stuff that's like the that. graduated but, fool. But think yeah. about this. The fool is said in his heart. There, there is, is no, no God. God. He didn't say in his mind. It's not that you figured out, oh, there's no God. It's not a thought pattern. It's a heart problem. And I ask these guys, I, I go to the atheist convention and preach. And I'm like, so do you spend your life protesting the Easter bunny too because you don't believe in it? <laughs> you know, I mean, I really right. think there's something they're showing you what's inside is like they actually do believe there's a God. Yeah. They're just trying to disprove it because then I don't have to obey him. That's right. right. Then I don't have to follow him. If he's not real, if I can get rid of him in my heart, 
but they know in their head they do. They know in their head that there is a God. Sure. You know, well, I mean, and they're if, fighting if, it just if, like they would fight if an the atheist. Easter Bunny or and something. a lot of the guys who are atheists tend to be a little bit more intellectual. And in their studies, you can't deny it. You, the first law of thermodynamics matter can't be created or destroyed. Well, if it can't be created or destroyed, where did it all come from? Yeah. It had to be created. Yeah. You know, everything is running down. Well, if everything is running down, there must have been a beginning. Who started it at the beginning? I mean, they... they well, there's some really smart scientists that yeah. actually say, believe it or not, I mean, these guys are the <laughs> primo scientists. They actually say, nothing exploded, and then there was everything. <laughs> right. Think about that. <laughs> nothing exploded, and then there was everything. They actually teach that. Not, not all of them, yeah. but there's a group of scientists that actually say that. How can nothing explode? That violates right. the scientific principles yes, they it's know. It's not scientific. Yeah. yeah. I had a hippie, a hippie um, high school teacher. He took us to one of the, one of the very few ponds in New York. And um, it was just dirty. It had all kinds of tadpoles in it and stuff like that. He said, that was you. <laughs> yeah. or, you know, paramecium, whatever. Right, goes, right, right. That was that How was about, you, and you know, we all drank that Kool Aid. Yeah, yeah. Abiogenesis, you know, like a rock, right? Or some chemical became a living form. How does that happen? Yeah, you know, and where does the information come from in DNA and RNA? You need both of them. You got a transmitter, a receiver. You've got a code. Who was the coder? Yeah. And the information in there is not physical. In it's DNA, spiritual. It's yeah. a spiritual thing. Yes, I can, it is. I can put information with my pen on a piece of paper and then take a photocopy of it. Now with the, all the technology, I could take a picture of that, convert it to digital, store it on a hard drive. The information's the same. Right. All and different ways. Where that, yeah. did the inf How does information evolve? Yeah. That's what I want to know. Well, it's, how does it, it evolve? It, again, what's happening personally in my life right now is a lot of the young ladies in my life. Um, and, uh, are pregnant, and uh -huh. um, and um, they are they're all coming home with their sonograms and all, and you know those are things you didn't see, Mike, when we were young. Maybe you as a doctor, but now it's it's anybody get oh, they come gosh. out, and not yeah. only not only are there photos, they're moving, the child's moving. Yes, and then you say, and you say, wow, it looks almost, and they say, no, Dad, it's a uh, it's only four inches, but you know it's blown up. It, right, right. You know? and it looks but like man, a little you, human being look, in there. Yeah. That at, if you can't believe there wasn't a creator, yeah, this didn't just happen. Fearfully this and wonderfully didn't made. Just God happen. did this. Yeah. My yeah. goodness. You know? But again, it's it's um it's 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 a sad state, uh, and the people out there and, and the the fools and, and as as um, Kevin said, there's a scorner, and you and I have always chuckled. The scorner is the graduated fool. Yeah. You know, this one that just yeah. keeps going, like 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 Kevin, yeah, that turns into the atheist. And, you know, basically wants to convince everybody there's no God, so they have no guilt in all the things that they do, right? And it's um, it's it's just sad. There's evidence everywhere, but here, and especially in American society, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. In American, society, you always have to have mental interruptions. TVs are on in the back. I can't tell you how many people get up in the morning and put on a TV. They're not even looking at it, just for noise. People just have to have noise. They have to. They have the constant interruption of thought. Not like when we talked about, like like your son Adam out in Africa. That sometimes when he goes out into into the country parts of Africa, where where the, at night they get together, they look at the stars. They're in tune. They know. They sure. know that what's not seen is more important than what's seen. Just by just by the living, just by the vibes. But here in America, man, when we start like when we start thinking too much or feeling something whoa, put on the radio yeah and and what we're again the show is what is truth and we're trying to uh, share the truth of the scripture the uh truth which was given by god himself and the thing is it it is spiritual it, it, when we're, we're speaking to you you're hearing these words and god's trying to communicate to your spirit and to your soul and jesus told a story once in a parable he said there was a sower he went out to sow and he sowed and somebody said, what does that mean? Well, said, I'm talking about sowing the seed of the word of God, someone going out and spreading God's word like we're doing here. And uh, some of the seed was by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured it up. And what happens is that seed, when God gives you something from the scriptures, he wants you to stop for a minute and think about it 
reason with it. God's reasonable. He wants you to be reasonable and and think on it and meditate on it and let it sink into your mind and to your heart. But if you turn something on or you get distracted, that's how a fowl can just pluck that fresh seed up and you just it, forgot what you heard and you're off in another place and you've missed God's word. God, yeah. Guys, how many times have you been witnessing to somebody and are interrupted by um, a, phone, a phone or another person comes, you know, it's just like, and you know that Satan just pushing it. Yeah. You, you know it is. It's, it's, you interrupt because when you're, when you're in the word and you're giving somebody the gospel, you're in the spirit. Yes. Right. And, uh, and all of a sudden, um, a car horn goes off or something that breaks, interrupts breaks, them, interrupts yep. the thought. Yep. Right. And you see that all the time. And that's, and that's so, it's so frustrating. But, but again, when you, it's self induced in America now. Uh, especially when you see in our young people, nobody thinks anymore. Remember the, the famous, the, the famous statue, statue of the guy with his, oh yeah yeah know, Rodin, thinking, and, and then there was yeah. a, the, my my father in law just loved this Norman Rockwell picture of a of a little boy yeah sitting on a, a stone thinking. Nobody thinks things out anymore. Yeah, and if you did, if you did, you would know that there's more to this world than what you're sitting on or what you're watching. Or just TV or, or sports or whatever, Some, yeah. Sometimes yeah. people feel safer not thinking. Absolutely. Right? It's a- like, I'm not going to be responsible because I didn't think this through. Absolutely. Or, you know, or, well, my priest said, so he's the one that's responsible. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I talk to a lot of people like that. Again, that's hoping on the on another mediator. Yes. And God doesn't want you to trust in another mediator. And, and There's God's going to hold mediator. you responsible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. directly um i i got a quote here from like a, what i was saying before this is just one of them but there's many of these quentin S- smith of western michigan university okay. he stated the most rational position to hold is that the universe came from nothing by nothing <laughs> and for nothing so this makes me think of you know you got a you got a five-year-old kid and you just went to the the grocery store and you went shopping and you bought all your groceries you get out in the car and you look in the mirror and the five-year-old sitting in the back seat eating a hershey bar you're like hey where'd you get that from well uh it, it came from nothing it just popped into it came existence from nothing. here yeah. yeah yeah and but who, who gave it to you uh no, no one, one. <laughs> and you're supposed <laughs> why, to why do you have it yeah. oh for nothing <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is like five-year-old thinking the problem with it is though <laughs> is, seriously is now, this guy that wrote that quote you're reading there, Kevin, he's yeah. he's a, a respected writer. Yes, in, I mean, in universities. I, you know, yeah, I could I could quote you uh, know people. Well, well here's many the, guys that people know. Dawkins says the same uh, thing. Uh, and so uh, these guys are are writers, and and people read their books, and they yeah. think on these and things. They're influencers. I think yeah. they're scientists, falsely so called. Yes. That's not true science. Again, the first law you just violated the first law. But saying he says that. that's rational. It's irrational. It's unscientific. It's yeah. Okay. But the it's, thing it's is, it, it also sends a second message in addition to the unscientific one is that if it came from nothing and it means nothing and it ends up in nothing, What's your my life is an accident. Yep. I've got nowhere I'm headed for. It can lead me to do irrational, foolish, right, right. deadly things right. like have happened recently. Yeah. yeah. And what's it's drinking, being married, because tomorrow God you die. alienated from the hope of God. Yeah. And um, Ephesians. Yeah. yeah. Without hope. Yep. You know, and, and why does this happen? It's like when I was a kid, we didn't have metal detectors at the schools. Right. We weren't shooting each other. Why is this happening? There's a lot of depression. The, a lot of young folks. In fact, I heard that the highest, uh, the death rate, the highest, uh, cause of death for 18 to 45 year olds is fentanyl now. Okay, and that's a form of suicide. Yeah, you, you're overdosing. Yeah. And now, there's a lot of suicide. Now, now, now here, and Paul is trying to say, look, it. I just told you about this great promise, and and God that made the promise can perform the promise. And what God wants to do, He didn't just write it for people back then, two thousand years ago. It's written for our sakes that we can have that promise because. Jesus was raised from the dead, and therefore we can now have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have to have that turmoil inside of us that's that war going, you know, maybe it's better to be dead. Maybe I'll just uh, pull the plug. Maybe I'll just pull the trigger. No, we can have peace now. We can rest by Jesus Christ. Now we have access by faith by believing what God said into all this great grace where we stand and we can now rejoice 
in the hope of the glory of God. It's not meaningless. It's not empty. It's not that there's a nothingness to it. There's a beautiful promise that Jesus said, look, in my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go, I'm going to come get you. You can trust me. You can take God at his word. It's wonderful. Why should anyone want to give up when you've got God on your side and you're on God's side? Amen. Well, when you when you have no hope, despair. Yeah, that's it's just natural, right? I mean, yeah. you have no hope. You have no reason. Right. You weren't created for a reason. Yeah. You, I'm just you're an accident. Just an accident. Yeah. It's like so. What's the point? Why bother? What's, what's the point? What's yeah. the point? So you have a whole generation now. I talk to them out on the streets. They have no hope. They're not like earlier generations. They are a high incidence of suicide, drug addiction. I mean, I come out of the 60s, right? The 60s, love, peace, and dope. You know, I, I was around in the 60s, right? I was a you know young man, and I saw all that stuff, but this stuff today is like, yeah, really. It's pure evil. Yeah, now, it's now, just now, crazy. The, the, just the two of the terms you used, love and peace, th- those sound good terms. Yeah. But what they meant, love, wasn't what he's talking about here because right. he's saying here, uh, we can rejoice in the hope and the glory of God. We can get patience. We can get experience. Verse 4, chapter 5, we can get hope. Hope makes us not ashamed. We can have the love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us as opposed to the love of sex and sexually transmitted diseases and all those things that come with it. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And And penicillin. This peace thing, they're not talking about peace in their hearts. No. They're talking about some kind of nirvana. We're going to make the world a peaceful place and we'll all hold hands. That hasn't been working out too well when I read the newspaper. Yeah. (laughs) It's like it's just getting worse and worse and worse. It's not getting better. It's like it's, you know, so the peace, love, and the dope thing. Even back then, it didn't work out. I mean, I, I remember there were big rock concerts where people died. I mean, we preached Woodstock right. 99. Three people died at that thing. You yeah. know, people go, why are you here? Well, I'm here to tell you about Jesus Christ, but I'm also here to warn you because sometimes some of you folks ain't going to leave this place That's today. Right. You're not going to go home. You, you never and, know. And you don't want to go into eternity without hope, without God, without yeah. eternal life. I mean, when you, when you consider the reality of it, life is fragile. How easy a life can be taken, not just by a bullet or a knife or a car accident, but by a sudden bursting of a blood vessel in the brain, the sudden catching of an infection that's deadly that there's no cure for, uh, the sudden working of a tumor inside that finally fills a vital organ and, and kills you. Life is fragile. And what he's saying here is, I have a promise for you that even if you were to lose your physical life, Jesus was raised from the dead and the power of the resurrection, God is going to promise to you if you will come by faith and believe. And when you believe, I will justify you. I will keep you. I will raise you and you have the hope and you can rejoice in the hope of the love and the glory of God. That's yeah, a good I, deal. Yeah, I've never had any, I, I, any salesman deal. offer me anything uh, close it, to that. It's a, it's a great deal. It's and, and, great and salesmen would ask me to sign a check. This is check was signed by Jesus. It yeah. costs me nothing. So what's, it's a what's free stopping, gift. What's stopping folks? I've seen people take their last breath and some people I've seen Christians that they're, they're, they're not clutching at the sides of right. the bed and grabbing right. the right. pillow and, huh, huh, oh, help me, you know. And the, but there's people that do that, you know. Oh, they're, sure. they're, you know, they're taking their last breath. They don't know where they're going to end up. And but Christians, I mean, we have a hope. We have a hope of eternal life. Yeah, it's like, uh, and, and that like doesn't he's, scare me anymore after I got saved. And like he Used said, to, this love was, of God that comes with that hope. Five five Romans five five. That hope that comes with the love of God comes with the spirit of God being placed inside of us. I mean, God communicating, bearing witness, his spirit to our spirit. And folks, you, you won't know that until you've taken the step of faith and you experience it, it's called the new birth. We only got about a minute left here, John. I just, uh, just wanted Mike, uh, Jesus himself said in John, 
uh, three eighteen. He said, "He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God." Now listen, and this is the commendation, condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. Every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. That's interesting. Okay, the show is called What Is Truth, and I know that Pilate. Ask Jesus, what is truth? Jesus will turn right back around and say to Pilate, and Pilate, what's the truth about you? Do you love the light or do you love the darkness? That's a question that we need to ask ourselves. We're out of time. Only got 20 seconds left. I want to thank you for joining us this week. We'll be with you next week. We're going to pick it up in Romans 5, 5 and continue. And uh, we invite you to come to the uh, church at 271 Bucyrus. Uh, come to the website, graceandtruthchurch.org, and uh, check us out online. And until we meet again next week, do like Jesus said, search the scriptures and you'll know what is true. Amen.